Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, I'm just reading here a note. Uh, okay. <laughs> Looks like LinkedIn is having some troubles going live, but we are live here on Facebook, like YouTube, Para and Periscope is linking to Twitter. So we are going to save changes and publish. So it looks like we're good to go. JD, welcome to the live stream. Welcome to the Thank webinar. Thank you very much for having me, Dick. Awesome. So for everybody who's kind of trickling in here, uh, today's webinar is about how to transition your traditional brick and mortar business into the new digital era. And whether that's because there's a snowstorm outside and it's spring or there's COVID-19 that's affecting your brick and mortar sales, or you're just in a business that you, you think that you're ready for a spot to transition to a more digital presence, whether that's launching your first e-commerce website, improving the one you already have, or even if you're a service-based business and you're wondering how you can serve your customers remotely, uh, today's webinar is definitely for you. So uh, JD, why don't you kind of uh, talk about yourself and uh, Build Labs, and then I'll kind of go into myself and online growth systems, and then we'll uh, go from there. Sounds good. Uh, yep, uh, my name is JD. I've been in uh, software uh, for over a decade now with primarily focusing on content management systems, e-commerce platforms, and, uh, and mobile applications. I started uh, Build Labs in 2018 with a focus to um, bring new graduates of coding boot camps and comp sci degrees and, and related courses, uh, um, bring them in the market of giving them a place to uh, perfect their craft uh, before they join the, the market at large. And what that allows me is uh, Build Labs offers affordable software uh, to those that need it uh, using these uh, apprentices, we call them apprentices. So uh, things have been going great. We've been growing even throughout this uh, interesting time and uh, we wanted to figure out a way to give back. And that's where we uh, kind of came up with the Bricks to, Bricks to Bytes uh, uh, campaign that we're, that we're partnering on. Yeah. So, and then we can dive into exactly what Bricks to Bytes campaign is here right after this. But uh, so trying to, for everyone who's watching, I can see that there's some numbers trickling in here from Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Periscope. Again, a reminder for people who are kind of joining in right now, uh, you can comment live on those live streams, to, uh, on, especially on YouTube and Facebook. And JD and I can actually be fed those questions and we can uh, pull them up here on screen with your profile picture and, and your question. We can answer those questions in real time here on the webinar. Um, and if you want to submit it anonymously, uh, that's no problem. Just kind of put that note in there, anonymous, and then ask your question. And then uh, we don't have to pull you up on the live stream, but uh, your face gets featured. <laughs> so that's kind of a plus if you're doing it from a business page or something. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, so my name is Dick Polupnik, and uh, I'm the chief growth officer and uh, founder of Online Growth Systems. And our company helps businesses scale from one to 200 million. That's the lane that we typically play in. And we provide fractional digital services to those companies as they scale along that process, that revenue stream, and uh, continue to hire out those full-time positions. So, for example, like JD's team has a lot of software developers um, that launch a lot of apps for companies. Our, our company, Online Growth Systems, will work with a business that's typically, once they kind of reach that $1 million mark and they, they're ready to scale to that $200, uh, we will provide whatever services that they need at the time, but they don't necessarily have the the demand or capital or time needs to hire a full-time 40 hour per week person. So, you know, not everybody has the Gary V videographer following them around 24 seven. They might just need a, a, a new video for a, a website they're launching or a product that they're launching. Um, so then we'll provide those video services and then vice versa. If uh, they might have a rock solid um, video and content team, but they need some people who are doing SEO and content writing or Facebook ads or uh, website development. So we'll provide those services to them as they help them scale and, it's really interesting to follow along with our customers along that customer journey as they scale because they eventually hire full-time people for services we were previously providing them uh, because they have the need for those full-time 40 hour per week people. But then they, that opens up a whole new can of worms now that they're bigger, you know, that now they need a HubSpot person because now they have a full, you know, sales team that they need automations for it. So uh, that's primarily what online growth systems does, which is why it, it made so much sense for us to partner here with build labs uh, to launch this uh, bricks to bytes campaign. And uh, JD, if I, I'll kind of touch on kind of why Online Growth Systems wanted to do this, but uh, and then you can dive into more of what it is and, and how we're going to help uh, companies, whether you're just watching the live stream here and you want to just take what the, not, the gold nuggets that you hear from this live stream and hit it and run, or if you want to work with us further. But uh, we primarily wanted to get involved because my team and I were having several, you know, we have Zoom meetings a lot and uh, we were talking about how we can give back and pay it forward to companies that are, might be struggling to transition from, you know, with COVID-19 and coronavirus 
and how they can start uh, getting that e-commerce play going on. So that's pretty much what we're doing for is um, a way to pay it forward and help out those businesses, whether it's the live stream or the actual campaign. So how about yourself? Uh, yeah, we, we often, uh, because of our affordable rate, we often get, um, we're the starting place for a lot of people that have uh, new and, and interesting and exciting apps that they want built, but they uh, just don't necessarily have the coding skills themselves to uh, to do it. So they usually come to us. And so we do a lot of, uh, you know, back of the napkin all the way through to completed app. And uh, we found that uh, though we can um, achieve that very uh, well, efficiently and affordably for them, they, we, we see the commonality of uh, now I've got my app, what do I do with it? Um, how do I market it? How do I get my customers to know about it? How do I make money off of it? I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's really the sounding point. So uh, again, that's that's why we appreciate the partnership with uh, Online Growth System because we we are not a marketing group. We can build whatever uh, whatever is needed or necessary to specifications. But uh, once we're done with it, we uh, we kind of kick the baby out the door and say, "There you go." And uh, and so we, we found that a lot off of to college. Kids, yeah, off to college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, get a, go get a job. Yeah. <laughs> um, we uh, we found that a lot of our, our our clients could really benefit by somebody taking them through that uh, that kind of gray. Uh, uh, nebulous world of marketing, uh, and uh, and th and that's part of where bricks to bytes come comes from as well too. Is is there's probably people out there that are thinking like, how do I get my you know services online? How do I get my store online? Um, and even if they do get it online, then what? How do we reach customers? How do I get uh, eyeballs? How do I set up SEO? How do I do all those things? Uh, they all take time and capability and skill to do them well, and so it's a it's a good scenario where you can find. Uh, partners and companies that are willing to do it for cheap or free, and uh, and use their specializations to uh, to your advantage. Definitely, definitely. And uh, right now, I just kind of want to also do the little mention there that uh, if anybody is watching, uh, well, well, I can see that people are watching. Uh, ask your questions on YouTube and Facebook, and we'll go ahead and answer them. So let's dive into kind of the meat and potatoes of uh, the content here, JD. Uh, if you see me looking this way, I've got two screens. I've got our list of questions that we were going to address, and then I've got the webcam over here. But uh, so I kind of want to touch on the number one question you need to ask yourself about what the right play is for both your digital strategy, whether it's the marketing or your website, and how you go about transitioning from brick and mortar to an e-commerce marketplace. Uh, and the first question you got to ask is, are you a service or are you a product, mm -hmm. right? So are you selling physical goods that need to be shipped or is this something that you're, are you a service that you're providing to people? So uh, one is, you know, physical product and then the other one is a human capital and those are going to be delivered and marketed and listed online differently. So I'll kind of give examples of both because uh, obviously we don't know exactly who's watching, uh, obviously both, but uh, yeah, both so, uh, so for the product businesses uh, and then JD can touch more on the platform, you want to be on platforms like Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, uh, you know, whether you maybe you're a very niche product and you want to go on Etsy, you know, there's the Amazons of the world. And then obviously there's best practices there, but for the marketing, you're going to be doing that differently versus a, a, a service. So if you're a cleaning company or you're a, uh, a bank, right, that's providing services, uh, that's as you approach that differently. So another thing to keep in mind is, are you selling pro like little niche products like this Darth Vader lightsaber for fun? <laughs> Uh, that is a, probably a one-time purchase, or is this something that people buy over and over and over? Do you have a lot of repeat repetition customers? Uh, it's particularly in the service industry, you know, if you're doing, if you're black topping people's driveways, you know, that's something that people might buy once every five, ten years, and you market that differently than you would, let's say, lawn care, which is a weekly service, and you hope that they re sign with you every year and year and again. That I'm using that as an example because that was one of my first company that I launched when I was a kid, but. Um, and that's kind of how you approach that. So once you kind of figure that out, so let's let's dive into let's dive into the product space for business first. If you're selling a product, I've got a friend Jacob Mischke, he owns Versatach. He's selling. And then the next question you have to ask is: Are you selling B two B? Are you selling B two C? Now, for his particular company, uh, they do both. So they sell directly to consumer to the customer. So an individual, uh, they, they particularly sell to uh, college students and it's a cup holder that goes on the side of your, your dormitory uh, bunk bed. 
and it holds your drinks and it's pretty cool. And they, they have a patent pending in the whole nine yards. So they can sell directly to students and that's you, that obviously is going to impact your marketing strategy, but they also sell B2B to the schools and they sell it in bulk for, you know, 2000 SKUs at a pop. So if you're selling to schools, the landing page is going to be different because you can't, you know, it's a lot smarter to say, here's a contact form. Uh, what's the, how many students do you have on campus? How many freshmen do you have coming in? And then you ask kind of qualification questions that you would in your normal sales process. Then you can get in touch with them and it's better to have a phone call conversation, a Zoom call, something along those lines. So you can kind of tailor the quote or tailor your bid or whatever it is that you're trying to do to that particular customer based on their needs. Because, you know, obviously these economies have scale. You can buy more and sell for cheaper and pass those savings on to your customer if they have a larger order. Versus if you're selling directly to the students, then you can have something like an Amazon where your, your customers can go directly to your website and, you know, add one or two to their cart. Maybe they want one for them and one for their roommate. And then they can cl- check out. They enter in the credit card information and they can enter in things like uh, Stripe. Uh, so, JD, you can touch on Stripe. And obviously, these different platforms have different things for that. Uh, but that's another thing you have to ask yourself. Are you B2B or B2C? And I kind of gave some examples of that. Uh, so, for the social media presence, let's kind of touch base on that. There are two types of social. Paid social and organic social. So for people who are unaware of what those terms are, when you post on Facebook, you have something called organic reach, which is how many eyeballs is Facebook going to show your post to without you having to pay for it? Those are people who are potentially following your page, liking your page. They're interactive. They're, they are uh, constantly engaging with your content. And the algorithm on whether it's YouTube or Facebook will show your posts to those individuals more frequently because they know they like your content because they engage with it. That's why sometimes you see you know, a fraction of the engagement compared to their following. You see these fake uh, Instagram accounts that have you know, 100,000 followers, but they only have five or six likes per post. Well, A, they could be bots. B, they could be purchased fake accounts. Or C, the engagement algorithm is so off that over time, Instagram is showing their posts to fewer and fewer and fewer people. So that's that's what organic reach is, is how many people are, is the platform that you're posting on showing it to. Then there's paid reach, which is like when you type in on Google, you know, uh, how to sell how to sell products online. There is going to be advertisements for the first two or three listings through Google. It'll say ad and it'll say a link. So those companies are paying Google to be listed first above the organic reach. That's how Google makes their money is through Google ads. And those there's there's advantages and there's disadvantages to both, right? It kind of depends on what your company is. So for the paid search, platforms like Facebook have completely pivoted from you know the 2009 to 2019. That transition over time has completely flipped on its head. Before you could post, you could build a company from scratch on Facebook back in you know 2009, 2010, 2011, by just posting organically for free, sharing videos, and that's how people get you know famous. That's why younger, that's why younger platforms have more virality at first, like TikToks of the world and Vine back in the day, is because they haven't monetized yet, they haven't started advertising. So, and there's fewer competition between creators so or businesses that are posting. So that way, the, t- the algorithm is more in your favor. It's showing more and more people, versus over time as what it reaches what is called maturity, platforms will transition from organic to paid, which is where Facebook currently is. So it's a pay to play platform, which means if you actually want results, unless you're like a, a you know celebrity chef, Gordon Ramsay or something like that, and you make a video and it gets a million views, regardless if you advertise it or not, you have to pay Facebook to show your content to individuals. And it's not just to people who are following you, you can actually target it to say, let's show it to my exact target customer, my, car, my pro- customer profile. You know, they, they have a dog and they're married and they live in this geolocation or, you know, X amount of miles from my business. And they, they have, they like, uh, they like having plants, you know what I mean? And then you can actually target it down. And some people think that's freaky, but Facebook knows that because, you know, you might've posted a picture of a dog or you follow dog pages and they, they can assume that you have a dog or maybe you've tagged them. Um, and that's how they, they know that data. And then they can use that to target. And that's why you see ads that sometimes see freaky, like, whoa, how do they know that I was looking at buying flower pots this year? Well, that's because you were looking at flower pots online and, and Facebook has something called a pixel that's on your computer or cookie. And uh, that way they can track that kind of stuff. And it actually helps provide you a better shopping experience. So uh, I'll kind of pass the torch on here to JD. Um, but uh, that's kind of a 
I'll kind of uh, cut the the organic versus paid there as kind of the first gold nugget. So, so sounds good. I mean, I, I that was kind of a good segue into uh, you know customer uh, locations and and where are they buying? Do they have the ability to walk into your store? Uh, probably they do if you're a brick and brick and mortar store. Um, but just because they have the they used to have the ability to walk in doesn't mean in the, in the current you know crisis that they can walk into your store. So you still have to know uh, where your customers. Uh, are going to be buying from and how to communicate with your customers. So everybody can now see why we partner with Dick because he knows more than all of us in uh, you know about the algorithms and uh, you know what goes on behind the scenes. I'll be honest, most of us don't care. If we just want to know well, how do I sell my stuff, uh, and that's why you don't utilize any specialists who you know those things are are so valuable. Um, you know our our services are really like once we've identified once. Once you've identified where your market is, uh, how strong your social presence is, uh, what type of sales it is, uh, you really, the, the, the next natural form is like, great, how do I get my products up online? As Dick mentioned, there's uh, there's lots of different platforms, lots of, lots of different integrations. You've got uh, payment integrations like uh, uh, Stripe and PayPal and online credit card processing, ACHs. Uh, you've got multiple different ways to get your uh, your customers' monies. Um, you've got product pages. You've got Shopify uh, and other e-commerce sites like uh, WooCommerce that are easily set up. Uh, when it's scenarios like you're just getting into the market, we typically uh, gear towards uh, or uh, uh, lean towards a Shopify site because it handles everything that you're going to want to handle, like security. We just got a security question here in our, in our Facebook uh, uh, about Zoom, but but this is still relevant. Uh, if you're moving to online, you have different security concerns than you do when you have a, a brick and mortar store. Uh, it's much more um, uh, open to, to uh, theft and hacking. And so we wanna make sure that we partner with organizations like Shopify that have handled uh, their SSL and security concerns for you. Uh, and then it's really just about uh, trying to determine what level of, of product services do you need? They've got everything from uh, a light to uh, an advanced and then the advanced is uh, just what it sounds you can sell anything you can um, uh, you can configure anything you, you've got infinite reports most of us don't need that level uh, all the way down to kind of a simple buy button that can sit on your on your current products page uh, and be handled um, uh, easily through through just you know not more than 10 20 hours of, of setup Right, right. Well, JD, let's kind of dive into, and I see we're, we're getting some questions here in the comments, so we'll be addressing those shortly, but let's kind of dive into that rabbit hole a little bit. For the people that are watching that might already have an e-commerce store, what are some best practices on their website that they can implement today that would increase conversion rate? Um, some of the first things you're probably going to want to do is is make sure um, uh, you're, well, I'm going to talk about my personal best practices uh, that I suggest. You're probably going to be able to find an infinite number of suggestions by everybody else, and certainly I'm not the uh, going to claim to be the master of everything. But um, uh, when when I look for and what I recommend my customers is high resolution, clear images. If you're a product based, people want to, uh, in the absence of being able to touch the product, they want to be able to look at it in in the amount of detail that they can to find it. So. Uh, spend the time or the money in making sure that you've got good solid product shots of your of your uh, uh, products. Uh, next thing is make make sure that uh, I mean it sounds really stupid, but make sure that the price and the buy buttons are prominent on wherever you, wherever you're at. I uh, I cannot um, tell you the amount of time that I've had uh, difficult times figuring out like what's the price for this uh, or how do I buy it or where do I go. It's amazing. It seems simple because we walk into stores now and you've got price tags on shirts that you buy, but uh, but I've seen websites where you have to click into the cart in order to see what the price is uh, or, or figure that out. Uh, you want to want, also want to make sure that you take into account uh, your shipping considerations. Your customers are going to want to know as soon as possible, well, great, I know what it's going to cost me, but uh, how much is it going to cost me to ship it from wherever I'm buying it to uh, my particular uh, locations. Um, and uh, you, you've also got a, a watch for, you want to make sure that you um, stay on top of your communication with your customers because 
people are going to be looking at your customer ratings and the product reviews and you'll want to make them if you've got positive reviews and ratings you're going to want to make those prominent in each and every product page uh, if you have negative reviews uh, a address whatever issues uh, are being called out by your customers uh, and and I would uh, um, suggest that you take that as feedback to be acted upon uh, and then uh, make sure that uh, you, you've got an ability for people to speak their mind about their products or services and again use that as information to improve because especially if this is your first store uh, you are going to make mistakes uh, you're not going to have everything that you need to uh, uh, set up you're going to get customer feedbacks um, and you want to be able to use those as uh, and, and respond to those as quickly as uh, as you possibly can. Uh, and then probably the final one that I would say is going to be like uh, give your customers a visual progress on how they're going through the, the cart. When I when I click the button, uh, it takes me to here. Your next step is checking out. The third step is setting up shipping, and finally payment. That's kind of a traditional one, but customers always want to know how many more steps do I have to get through. Uh, especially that helps with uh, cart abandonment. Uh, you want to make sure that once you've drawn their attention there. Once you've got them to click on that product, and once they've started that uh, that uh, checkout process, those are some big hurdles that you've just overcome. You don't want to lose them because they don't know, oh, well, you know, I'm in a hurry. How many more steps do I have to get through? So uh, that's kind of one of the, the key one that, um, that you feel you want to address. Yeah, I like that. And you actually inspired me to kind of touch on two things from a marketing perspective. Uh, we have a client who is massive, massive business, like one of the largest online retailers of their particular product in the, on the planet. And one thing that we're doing for them is split testing. And if you don't know what split testing is, it's you send out two different versions of something. In this case, it's an email campaign for abandoned cart recovery. So what JD was just saying is, let's say that somebody adds your product to the cart on your website. They go through and then, you know, maybe their kids, you know, they're teaching their kid. They're trying to somebody, um, you know, mom and dad are, homeschooling their kids right now during COVID-19 and you know, mom, I got this math question and then they go over there and they help their kids and then they kind of forget to check out, right? Uh, whether it's intentional or unintentional. So one thing that we're doing is you implement abandoned cart recovery emails automated. So you completely hands-free, you set it up so that the platform does it for you in your sleep. An hour later, if they haven't checked out, if they, they, if, if they have, yes, added that item to their cart, but no, they have not purchased yet, like actually click the button, paid for it. Then you send them, you know, 30 to 60 minutes later, an email that says, hey, you know, don't forget this item in your cart. Everybody's seen it, for, you know, everybody's experienced it. The reason you do that is because it actually works, <laughs> right? And then one thing you do to get those numbers up, let's say that right now, let's say that you have a 10% con conversion rate. So one out of every 10 emails that you're sending to your abandoned cart recovery cl list actually clicks on the link and finishes the process and you get a new sale. One way that you can potentially double or triple that number or even increase it by a couple percentage points is doing split tests. And in that email, you send, you can test different things. You test one thing at a time though. Otherwise you, you don't, you won't be able to correlate what was it that actually worked? What caused the number to go up? For example, we tested using their first name in the subject line, like, hey, Dick, mm -hmm. don't forget your item in this cart. And then the other version, we just went, hey, don't forget this item in your cart. Obviously the one using your first name is a pretty common best practice. That one had us better conversion rates. Then you test what color of the button should we use? What image should we use? Should we use an image or should we use a video? By split testing, you'll identify what your customers like, right? Do you want a testimonial or do you want the, the five-star review? Are reviews or testimonials better, right? That again might depend. Are you a product? Then you might want to review, you might want reviews. If you're a service, you might want testimonials, right? It kind of depends, but you split test it, figure out which one converts further, which one drives sales. Then you cut the one that's the loser, you double down on the one that's the winner, and then you split test something else. And you do that over and over and over and over. And eventually your sales grow from, like I said, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, and that's how you grow your e-commerce company. So that's one piece I wanted to touch on. Uh, one thing I really, really like that you said, JD, is images. And I have experienced this as a consumer firsthand within the last 48 hours, <laughs> okay? A lot of people who might be watching this live stream right now could be in the restaurant business. If you're in the restaurant business, you have been extremely affected by COVID-19. And I'm going to share my screen right now and show you. Check this out. Can you see this? Yeah, okay. You all can see this. Yeah. So this is Uber Eats. 
Okay. I use, I'm an Uber Eats a premium member subscriber. Okay. I'm not a huge cook. I don't like to cook. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, I would rather spend my time working than, uh, than cooking. So Uber Eats, I'm a huge user. I use it all the time. And uh, I, I could say it's to support the local restaurants, which is partly true, but I just don't like to cook. <laughs> so one thing here is images will seriously either gain or lose my business. Yeah. Like I will purchase from you based on your pictures. Seriously. Uh, I'm not looking at these because that's traditional. Let's take a look at Stacks Cafe. And if, you, if, I, if this is your business, I'm not picking on you. Uh, consider this encouragement. This is perfect. Okay. Regardless of the fact that they're not open today, that's fine. But when I look at here, I see, let's count how many pictures. One, two, three, four, five. So they got five pictures here and a lot of text versus, let's check out this guy, Corey. Corey's Bagels. Currently unavailable. That must be for COVID-19. That's fine. Let's look at, let's look at the Shake Shack. Every single food item on their list, except for this. I don't know if that, oh, that's for their dogs, treats, I think. Um, has an image, right? It shows me what I'm going to purchase. The Shake Burger, right? That, and it's a beautiful photo. And this is what's great about photos is you bring in a customer one, or you bring in a photographer once. You can even shoot this with your iPhone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like iPhones have, especially like the Death Star ones with the three, you know, things. You know, phones today are better than professional DSLRs were 10 years ago, right? You can take this, take a little light, put your flash on, take some images, upload them to your e-commerce site, or if you're a restaurant, upload them on Uber Eats or Grubhub or wherever you're selling. Yeah. And that's going to increase your conversion rate for real. Double or triple, hands down. Spend, so the, that's just, spend the time. Spend the time to get good, decent quality photos. Watch a mm -hmm. video or two. Uh, it, it, it's not rocket scientists. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but you will have you will see instant conversions uh, for you, sure when you add or improve your your, your imagery. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know if uh, this might be a common knowledge, but on I know that McDonald's they will shoot and they will make. I think it was some crazy number, like up to a hundred burgers to get that perfect photo. Obviously, you know, they're a billion dollar corporation, but it just proves to point that they're willing to make a hundred Big Macs over and over and over and over with the same photographer, even if it takes four days to get this perfect picture, perfect photo. The sesames on the bun have to be just right. You know, the crisp of the, whatever these, these fake things are, you know, <laughs> so to get this, Huh? What do they do with all those extra burgers? I maybe feed them to the crew, the the crew that's there setting them up. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but like this, you know, they want the cheese melted just right, right? So they'll they'll make a hundred different Big Macs to get this exact per picture perfect one, and because they know even if this increases it by point zero 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 one percent for McDonald's, that might be a billion dollar photo, the difference between a billion dollars or not, right? So if that's what McDonald's is doing. And they have room to, to make mistakes. Where do you think you, as a small business, should be? Mm -hmm. Think about that. How many photos do you need to take of your burger, of your salad, of your uh, your your uh, old fashioned drink at the bar, to get customers to say, "Oh my God, that looks delicious." We're ordering from here, right? And uh, that's something cool about about 2020 is you don't necessarily have to build your own completely custom from scratch e commerce website to get your restaurant online. Right? You can leverage existing platforms like Shopify, like WooCommerce, like Uber Eats if you're a delivery, you know, if you're if you're a restaurant. So I just wanted to share that with everybody because it's it's meaningful and it impacts your your top dollar, your revenue, yep. hands down. Yep, absolutely. And, th and that's part of one of the, the, the great things about this, whether you are a, a retail shop, uh, whether you're a restaurant, uh, whether you're selling services, whether you're selling goods, most of this stuff is is universal. I mean, you might have to uh, tweak it for your particular business, but it, it's uh, universal as much as you can about uh, uh, images. We've got a question down here about uh, quantity uh, versus quality uh, in, in the site. Um, you're going to get you're going to get uh, a ton of different answers on that depending on who you ask. I mean, you need to make sure that you're providing. Uh, you know, in my opinion only is you need to make sure you're providing enough information to give them what they're probably looking for at that point, but not too much more. That's, what, that's why 
we, uh, the, the internet has really migrated away from uh, text-based uh, um, descriptions, which none of us read, to images and image-based um, uh, image-based. Uh, can't think of the word I, I, I'm thinking of. See, it's not scripted. Um, <laughs> this is live. <laughs> this, yeah, this, this is live. So um, image-based descriptions. You know, like that's why a picture does say a thousand words. And there's a lot yeah. of websites that you will lose customers if you try to have a thousand words to describe your burger or your service or whatever your product mm -hmm. is. Uh, get a great image in there. Have a have enough information to tell them what you're offering them, and then be clear about what you want them to do. That's probably another point that I should have put on my earlier is like a lot of people miss the, the mark when they say, uh, what am I asking this person to do on my website? Uh, if I want them to purchase something, I need to make sure that, that it's always easy and top of mind to, to purchase it. If I'm giving them all this information and these fantastic photos that I spent all morning uh, uh, taking uh, photos for, I need to make it very simple on every simple page to buy that, buy that item using a uh, click here to buy or click the image or anywhere that they can click should take them directly should add it to your cart and take them directly to your to your store but anyway uh yeah. so so some good universal information to use so let's let's we've got some questions here that are waiting in queue let's kind of tackle those questions yep and then uh i want to dive into practical tools like yep. actual urls that you can type in to get started because so far we've been kind of at the strategy level and then let's answer this Q&A that we've got here pending in our chat. And then let's dive into the tactical of like how you can actually execute. Step one, step two, step three, launch, revenue. What do you do after that? Step four, five, six. So yep. let's do that. So uh, let's kind of bring up that question you kind of already started addressing, JD. So Jacob Mischke um, gave him a shout out earlier in the live stream. Uh, so he said, another question I have pertains to quantity versus quality when it comes to your website. Is it more important to have detailed informational website or a cleaner uh, slicker site, but ri having risking more people uh, not getting in the information they're seeking. Uh, Jacob, I think that's a great question from a marketing perspective. My answer is both because buyers have different personality types. Somebody like myself, I don't want to do a lot of reading, right? I want to look at pictures. I want to watch videos. I consume content differently. If you ask any random person on the street, where do you consume your news? Where do you consume your content? Where, what platforms are you spending the most time on? If you ask my grandma, she's going to say Facebook, and she's only going to say Facebook. If you ask uh, my girlfriend, she'll say TikTok and she, or, or YouTube, right? If you ask myself, LinkedIn, right? That's where I consume my content. So that's another thing to kind of touch on the marketing platform is which platform should I be on? All of them, <laughs> right? Unless you've got like a very, very particular niche, like I am selling one of our clients sells fabrics, right? They're one of the largest fabric e-commerce companies in the world they 100% should be focusing on, on, on Facebook because that's where their customers are, right? There's no point in wasting time on Twitter because none of the grandmas that are sewing quilts are on Twitter, right? They're all on Facebook. So that's where they should be focusing. For your website, what Jacob was asking is, do I go super descriptive and super detailed or do I kind of keep it light and aesthetic? Number one, it's gonna depend on your customers. If you are a photographer, a videographer, or if you are a restaurant, I would say, go more of the aesthetic route because that's what you're selling. You're selling an experience, a look, a feel, right? So you want to make that experience, not just in your actual business and your product and your service, but on your digital personality as well. Um, on the flip side, if you are an attorney, it's, you probably want something that's more detailed. You want actual, you know, listing out like, here is my experience. Here's my, you know, our, our, here's why you should work with us. Here's a case study of a public hearing that we were part of that we helped win X amount of dollars. I mean, and then that's when you kind of dive into the deep, the, the nitty gritty, right? So number one, it's going to depend on your niche and it's going to depend on your industry. But then number two, I think if you are in one of those industries where both like online growth systems, we have both customer profiles, right? We have people who like the visual and they want the audio and they want videos and they like live streams like this. And then we have people who say, send me your proposal and they will read a 30 page proposal word for word for word. And they will send me back seriously a hundred questions. It's like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I haven't even read my own proposal that into that in depth, you know what I mean? <laughs> like to that much thought, but those people have different personality types, right? They are super analytical. So we want to, you want to to cater to both personality types if you can. So one thing that works great on our blog is the read more button. You provide them the top, 
four things. So if somebody wants to read your blog post, oops, sorry, their blog, your blog post in five minutes and kind of get the gold nuggets, boom, give them the gold nuggets first five minutes. And then you have that little read more button and then boom, you know, the, the blog triples in length and then people who want to dive super deep, they can. That's just a light example on your, if you have an e-commerce website and you have a product you know, you list on uh, even on Amazon, if you look at it, it's, you know, gives the top five kind of uh, description things. But if you scroll down, what happens? You see pictures, you see videos that other customers have taken, you see ratings, different stars. You scroll down, it shows you price comparisons, product A versus C versus B, X, Y, Z. And you scroll down and guess what? There's a whole company about section. And that's one strategy is, is having that page that kind of goes longer. Then you can dive deeper and deeper and deeper into those things because the people who are interested in more details are people who scroll. Right. And the people who are ready to check out, like JD said earlier, you include the price, you include an image, you include a brief description, and you include a buy now button without having to scroll. What's called what's called first pay, or what's called uh, above the fold. Above the fold means you can see it without having to scroll with your mouse or, or go up and down on your mobile with your finger. So uh, that's a super common term in SEO because if you're below the fold, that means that you're you're going to get way less clicks, way less traffic versus your competitors who are above the fold on Google search, right? If they have to scroll to find you on Google search, you're just going to get less views. So that's uh, that's another piece is include that brief information above the fold and then below the fold, you can include more details. Uh, JD, any comments on that piece? Uh, no, I think you said it uh, perfectly right. Just make sure it's as as simple as possible to, to, to buy. I mean, that's that's what they're there for. That's what you want them there for. Um, that, that here's the price, here's what it is, here's what where you can buy it, click here, get it done, kind of, kind of approach to every product. So, mm -hmm. um, we got a question from Adam. Uh, when transitioning from brick and mortar to an e-commerce online store, what are the top five components we should we focus on? Um, I, I think we probably talked about some of these already, Adam, but just in case we didn't, I think there's there's a couple of different things that we could talk about, like uh, to stay engaged with your customers. Most products that you work with are going to have a when you check out, they're going to get an email, uh, and that's the way that you're going to uh, use to to. Uh, stay engaged with your customers. We all receive the notifications like, oh, this went on sale that you might be interested in. Those are ways that you constantly stay engaged with the customers. And Nick, you're much better able to answer this, but like, there's also just information. Like, uh, you know, um, there, there's a theory of you know, you're, you're, you're there to enlighten your customers, uh, right, with, with the information that they might be interested in. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that's one of the, the, the best ways to kind of stay engaged is to help your, your customers more understand what they might want. It isn't just about like throwing more in more stuff at them and hoping that they buy. It's it, it's about you know helping your customers understand the the, the, the value uh, and educating your customers. So they can probably have more to say on this. Yeah. So Adam, I, I kind of want to dive into the the components a person should focus on. Like you asked, of staying engaged. So number one having an easily accessible chat, customer support, okay? So if, you're, if you are making that transition to, from brick and mortar to e-commerce, if, you know, if people were in the store, what do you have? You have individuals, you go into uh, Walmart or you go into uh, Macy's and there are customer success representatives or there are you know, customer service people walking around the store actively seeking customers. You go to Target and you have people come up and say, how can I help you? Uh, so I want, you can, if you can see my bookshelf back here, huge, huge avid reader in the book, grinding it out, which is the founder of McDonald's story, whether you think it was ethical or not, there's still business lessons to be learned there. He, uh, he coined, or, or forgive me, it wasn't that book. It was, uh, built, made in America by Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. He coined the phrase, how can I help you for real? He coined that phrase because other uh, customer or other competitors of his were saying, can I help you with anything? What can I help you with? Uh, or do you need help? And the answer would be, they would have closed ended questions. Yes or no. No, I don't need help. Instead, he started saying to his, his, his people at Walmart, let's ask, how can I help you? Because you can't say no, that's not a closed ended. That's an open ended question. What can I help you with? How can I help you? And uh, one thing that you can do that digitally is by having chat bots, right? Or having something, and I'm getting kind of in the weeds here, but you, Facebook has built in for free, for free, Messenger that you can easily 
for free also tie into your e-commerce website or your, you know, your service-based website. And what it does is after your customer has been on your website for, you can make whatever time, five seconds, five minutes, five hours, bloop, a little thing in the corner, bottom right, usually I'm sure everybody's seen it says, hi, uh, my name is Adam. How can I help you today? And then you can engage with an app, whether it's an actual human or a robot that has frequently asked questions baked in and have that customer engagement because there's not people who are physically walking through your store anymore because of COVID-19 or whatever. Um, or even post and pre COVID-19, this is a great solution because not, not all customers go to brick and mortar anymore. Let's just be real. Um, so that's one thing is chat bots. Number two, direct messages. Uh, one thing that is super huge is whether you're on Twitter, especially on Twitter, the engagement is crazy. When you message someone privately, the engagement is almost 100% because when a business is actually, I'm, I, I tweet out questions all the time to, to companies and because I know it works. So you tweet a question like, hey, Zoom, I'm having issues with feature ABC. And then usually they'll say, hey, no problem. We just sent you a DM so we can help you figure out your problem. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do is be active on there. And actually let your customers know, hey, we are active on our social media and we can engage with you um, on that level. Another thing is, this is my most practical or tactical B2B tip that you will hear all, all week, all month. LinkedIn has video messaging capability. And most people don't know that. Nine times out of 10, when I send a video message privately to someone, the first response is, Oh my God, I didn't know you could send private video messages to people. And then number two, they follow up on whatever I was hoping to, for hoping them to follow up with, <laughs> whether it's closing a deal, making a partnership, uh, getting them to be a, a, a guest on the show, whatever. So on LinkedIn, if you don't have a profile and you're in the B2B space, step one is open up a LinkedIn profile, right? Step two is go to your, whether it's a prospect that you just had a meeting with, whether it was on phone or on Zoom or in person, Immediately afterwards, within an hour afterwards, you send them a video. You take your phone, selfie style, quality production can be super free, you know, down and dirty, five seconds. You look at it, you say, hey, uh, hey, JD, thanks for uh, co-hosting the webinar with me today. It was super fun. Uh, looking forward to working on this uh, Bytes to Build project or uh, build a Bricks to Bytes uh, campaign with you. And you click send. Just a five-second video to JD privately in the messages, in his private LinkedIn message. JD will watch that 15-second video. You should probably say, oh my God, I didn't know you could do that. That's super cool. And then number two, follow up with whatever I was trying to do. So that's a really practical tip that you can actually start using today. That takes 15 seconds and it's super impressive and people, not a lot of people are using it. So it's an extreme blue ocean. If you've heard of the blue ocean versus red ocean strategy, red ocean refers to it's bloody competition. It's war, right? Versus the blue ocean, it's clean. It's something that no, there's not a lot of competition there. You're going to be noticed. It's getting attention, right? So that's a practical B2B tip. And then uh, last but not least is email. There, uh, I was listening to a podcast of the day. I can't remember which CEO it was. Uh, it was, it wasn't Uber. It was like one of the one of the recent, more younger unicorns who said, occasionally I'll go into our customer support queue, and I'll actually find the most recent one because most people try to answer the oldest to the newest. He said, I'll answer the newest one that might have just come in two seconds ago. Instantly send a reply, and they'll go, holy shit. The CEO of the of Uber just you know responded to my my uh, my customer support query via email, and uh, that number one builds extreme brand rapport, uh, brand lo loyalty, and it's a great customer service practice. So making sure that you're checking your email, responding in a, in a timely manner, and uh, actually providing an email for people if you don't already that they can ask those kinds of questions. So Adam, I hope that kind of helps uh, of how you can stay engaged with your customers. You know. In a digital era is uh so chatbots direct messages try video on linkedin and of course having that email being super active and engaging and jd any other pieces uh no and for those of you that are furiously scribbling this down uh we will follow up with uh a semi transcript of of the comments and uh questions and the answers that we've got here too so uh don't worry about writing all this down we'll, we'll follow up with you afterwards uh just in case you can use any of this Awesome. Awesome. And uh, at the end of the webinar here uh, in about 15 minutes, uh, we'll be kind of announcing what that Bricks to Bytes campaign looks like. If you are a business that's looking to transition from traditional brick and mortar to a digital marketplace or whether you're launching your website for the first time or you're trying to improve the one you have and get more traffic and get more sales and revenue, um, uh, Build Labs and Online Growth Systems are partnering to pay it forward 
and we have an app, this is an application. Um, it's an application process uh, and we're doing it for cost. So uh, JD and I aren't profiting from this. We're taking a haircut because uh, we're just kind of paying essentially our costs, our software and our payroll costs. And then, uh, cause we want to pay it forward and help out these businesses that are struggling, whether you're struggling or not, and you're just ready to make that move. Um, this is the perfect opportunity to do that. And for t- full transparency, hopefully uh, you'll get to the point where you'll hit scalability and whether it's a year or five or 10 years from now, uh, then you might become an actual customer of JDR- JDRIs. So uh, yeah, I think this is, this is like the, the perfect time for, for customers to, um, you know, use this, um, I don't want to call it downtime, but, but un- unexpected uh, um, freedom to prepare for the next years, right? Like it, it's, it's opportunity, two, opportunity, right? It, there's two options to take. You either, uh, you know, sit back and, and wait for the market to correct, which we know it will. We just don't know when, when it's going to happen, whether it's going to be uh, mm-hmm. two weeks or two months or two years. But either way, if you use this time to uh, get proactive, Get your store, get your service up online, and start making money. Uh, when you come back, um, when you come back, you're going to be stronger because you're going to now have two uh, revenue streams: your traditional brick and mortar and your e-commerce. So, mm-hmm. um, so you should be all set. Okay. Right, right. And I, I mean, and you might be in one of those companies' cases that actually makes the full pivot. Uh, you know, you might say, "Oh my God, we're making so much more money, and it's so much easier, and we don't have to pay rent." You know, on a retail space, all we need is inventory warehouse space, or maybe you're doing drop shipping. You know, who knows? Um, there's a there's been a couple of friends of mine that have actually made that full pivot from brick and brick and mortar to complete e-commerce, and uh, and then of course, or you could like JD said, you can have two revenue streams and potentially double, triple, quadruple your business. And what's great about e-commerce scalability. Yep. Every time you need to expand your company, every time Walmart needs to expand, they need to build a new store. Every time uh, McDonald's needs to open a new restaurant, they need to remodel a new space, hire new staff, uh, you know, do advertising for that local region. You know, there's a lot that goes into rolling it out, a lot of capital, a lot of time. Digital, it's one location. It's digital. You can open it on any platform, any device, any as long as you have an internet access, right, and uh, a functioning device, people can become customers, right? So that's what's something that's super nice about uh, digital. So we've got another question here. Uh, this one was earlier from Jacob Mischke. Uh, hey, Dick, I have a question about Zoom. Uh, I love their features and capabilities, but I'm concerned about the recent security issues I've heard about on the news. Number one, should I drop Zoom altogether for a different platform? Or number two, uh, if I stick with Zoom, what can I do to ensure it's safer to use? Great question, Jacob. Zoom, in case you don't know what Zoom is, uh, that's actually a, a tactical tool that I was going to recommend later in the webinar. So. Uh, to answer the first part of your question, Jacob, I think you should stick with Zoom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, I could be wrong. You know, I, I, do, I don't. I want to put the disclaimer out there that if you know if they get hacked or something like that, I'm not responsible. But uh, the reason I think you should stick with Zoom is number one, it's easy to use. Number two, uh, the quality is fantastic. If you compare it to the Google Hangouts of the world, or even FaceTimes of the world, uh, or YouTube, or, or I mean uh, Facebook video chat. The quality is amazing. It's super easy, especially if you're B2B. If you're in B2B, Zoom is one of the best tools you can use right now during COVID-19 to have that customer relationship, to kind of go back to Adam's question from earlier. Uh, We have weekly, at Online Growth Systems, we have weekly check-in calls with our customers, whether we need to or not. Why? Because it builds rapport, it answers questions, it makes sure that we're on top of everything, it addresses problems before they arise organically, and it uh, it builds that relationship over time. Oh, we're getting in... uh, it looks like uh, JD here said uh, they're patching it. So that's true. So J- what JD is saying is one one other reason I think you should stick with Zoom is they are releasing security updates daily, almost daily. Every time I log into Zoom, it seems like uh, they, they're making me download new updates or they say, hey, we recently updated this new security patch, this new feature. Uh, and then it's been a learning curve, right? But they're doing a great job of documenting what they're fixing, what they're working on and how to use these new features. So um I don't know if I can, I don't think I could be able to screen share with Zoom and the live stream going on at the same time, but with Zoom, uh, they have, you know, waiting rooms. So if you've heard of the Zoom bombings where people are doing inappropriate things and, uh, and crowd bomb or kind of, uh, 
it's like the wedding crashers equivalent to a Zoom meeting, right? They'll jump in your meeting and uh, sh share their screen with some dirty images and whatever. So how you avoid that is number one, you have passwords. You have your meetings password protected. So when you're setting up that meeting, you click that little checkbox that says, yes, add a password to my meeting. And then it adds it to the URL and then people have to enter that to get in. So number one, that's going to avoid that uh, or avoid that piece. It's going to help. Number two, that's the, the waiting room thing is so if somebody was able to find your password or they were able to you know hack their algorithm and, and find that encryption key to find your password, even if they do find your password, they have to sit in this lobby or this virtual waiting room and they won't be able to join via video or audio until the host of the Zoom meeting lets them in. So if there's a weird phone number that you don't recognize and you're like, hmm, it was supposed to just be JD and I on this on this Zoom call, and there's this third party that's, you know, written in some language I don't recognize, or it's somebody's name I don't know who it is. Just don't let them in the meeting. It's as simple as that. You just click deny, or just let them sit there in the waiting room forever. Let let them waste their time. So that's a, a security update number two. Um, and they're they're doing they have a whole new section in the bottom portion of Zoom that actually says security features, and you can go in there and you can check those settings. Um, so between the fact that they're being super on top of it, I know that they scaled from 10 million users to 200 million within the last uh, 60 days. So they're, you know, coming up with these, there's this new security vulnerabilities involved with that type of scale, and they're trying to scale to meet that demand. Um, I know that one thing that uh, is also a concern is uh, having, having your client's data released or having that interrupted. And uh, my response to that is uh, I, 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 I personally don't think that the risk of a random hacker finding your particular Zoom meeting and live streaming it to the world outweighs the risk of not communicating with your clients, if that makes sense. JD, would you agree with that? I would agree, yeah. That sounds good, right? Okay. And uh, JD here uh, from, from YouTube made a comment. Uh, they're making a lot of security updates. And uh, yeah, I totally agree. I think uh, if there are any security updates, they have, I know that one thing that, that Zoom is doing is they've actually increased their bug hunter program. And then JD, why don't you kind of talk about what bug hunting is and how they're, what that means? Uh, I am probably not the guy to, to speak uh, uh, well to, to this. I have uh, developers who, who do this uh, for me, but uh, <laughs> well, I mean, JD's the CEO, he's the CEO. Yeah. Yeah. So so the, the, the thing that I liked about, about Zoom and uh, uh, is that I mean, it's going to be so simple, but they, they came out and he said, yep, mea culpa. You know, I, I didn't even think about security. Uh, this is going to happen to everybody. It, it does happen to everybody where you hit a point where you hit something that you never thought of. And your reaction to that is what uh, helps to define you. If you uh, if you react and say, well, this, that's not my fault. I, I didn't have anything to do with that. You know, users should have set up passwords, whatever it is. Um, uh, the, the reason I like Zoom and why I would I'm also planning to stay with, with using Zoom is uh, because it came out and said, "Yep, we didn't think about this, but we're we're on it now." Uh, that to me is, is a sign of a good a good organization. Uh, um, I mean, it, it's pretty simple, it's pretty pretty lightweight, but but that's what I, that's my particular thought. Mm -hmm. And I know that we're approaching uh, four o'clock here. Yeah, we have uh, left. Let's let's talk if you guys don't mind. Uh, I want to get into uh, kind of the tactical on on the product side. Uh, he said no. Um, uh, so one of our you know kind of one of the things that I want to leave this this group with is you know when we're trying to get somebody up online on e-commerce uh, uh, quickly, we tend to uh, uh, work with Shopify. Uh, we like Shopify as a platform because there's uh, multiple different levels. I think I talked about it earlier, but there's four different levels. Everything from light to basic to standard to advanced, uh, depending on what you, you need. Most of you are probably gonna be somewhere, if you're just getting started, you're probably just gonna need something basic or, or light. If you find that you're uh, looking to get more advanced and you want some more advanced reporting, or you want things like uh, card abandonment automation or A-B testing for your pages as mentioned, uh, those are, are available in uh, standard or advanced. Uh, so there's specific platforms uh, 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 capabilities that that we like about the Shopify platform that handles your e-commerce, uh, um, your handles your cart, it handles, handles payment integration for you, uh, and it's it's almost plug and play. So there's some uh, configuration that you, you can do. If you're non-technical at all, you can still probably get it done. If you're a little bit technical, uh, it's going to take you you know anywhere from five to twenty hours to get your, your site up and, and ready. 
If you are not technical at all, we're here to help. Uh, there's lots of places you can get help, but it's a great, uh, amazing tool to take you from not online to online. Mm -hmm. Yep, I totally agree. And a lot of our customers use uh, Shopify. And then as they scale, this is something good for you to know. If you are a, if you're a company that's doing more than a million dollars in sales, uh, okay, let me rephrase that. If you project your online sales will probably be north of a million dollars, uh, I think actually having a conversation with JD and myself might be more beneficial to you because uh, something like Magento might make more sense because they've got a, a thicker back end and more infrastructure for inventory if you're doing, if you're pushing a lot of SKUs. If you have four or five products or you're projecting north or south of a million dollars in online sales a year, Shopify is hands down the solution for you because it's easy to use. You can update inventory. Uh, you can onboard your, your retail staff to actually use it. And what's great about it is once if you have Shopify, you can actually use it as your POS system, your point of sale system, and your actual re brick and mortar retail store and have them linked. And there's a whole nine yards. There's a, a lot of uh, benefits there. So uh, you can see here they've got you know different products, uh, marketing and SEO baked in. They've got analytics, which is, in, I mean, online growth systems, it's like, if you're not measuring your traffic and you're not measuring, if you're not, what gets measured gets managed, right? That's a Peter Drucker quote. If you're not, if you don't know how many people are visiting your website, looking at your products, adding to your checkout, how many sales you're getting, how are you know, how will you know if what you're doing is working and where to spend your capital and time, right? If you, if you think, oh my gosh, yeah, we, we do a Facebook live stream once a day, you know, uh, but there's no sales that are coming from it. There's no traffic that's coming from it. Cut that and double down on the things that are working. Yeah, we spent $5 on YouTube and we got $1,000 in sales. Oh my God, let's dump every dollar you have into that and you know get that crazy return on investment. So you need to be measuring what that's what's going on. And part of that is making sure you have Google Analytics integrated, making sure you have Facebook Analytics integrated, your Shopify analytics are working and humming with all your other services. Um, so that's gonna be a huge takeaway from this is once, whether you're doing it, you're doing the DIY thing where you wanna apply to be a part of the brick and or Bricks to Bytes campaign, uh, you know, kind of uh, campaign there, you need to make sure that you're measuring your stuff because otherwise, how are you going to know? So, um, Dick, that might be a good segue to talk about it. We only have three minutes left. Um, yep. Yep. It, 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 it's pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, uh, like Dick mentioned earlier, we want to do things at, at cost. We have some, some staff expenses that we need to cover as well, too. Um, but what we want to do is we want to uh, build that wants to offer anybody that, that is non-technical at all, or anybody that just doesn't have the time, we will build you a Shopify site uh, for five hundred dollars uh, or flat fee. If you need something more advanced or standard, we might have to work something else out. But if you need something light or basic, we will build that site for you uh, for five hundred dollars flat fee. Get you up and running, uh, uh, and and our commitment is three days, unless we have a deluge. Three days, we'll have you up and running uh, on Shopify or less. Uh, and then since earlier, as we mentioned, we know that most of our customers that come to us, once they have the product, they still don't know what to do with it. That's why we, we, uh, we're partnering with, with Dick and, and Dick has created his kind of his own uh, post-launch marketing uh, platform for, for Bricks, Bricks to Bytes. Dick. Yep. So uh, just to kind of touch base on that. So if you're watching right now or you're watching the replay afterwards or you're reading the show notes. So... Lots of gold nuggets if you want to just take the information you've learned on this webinar and hit it and run. We've talked about Shopify. We've talked about how to keep engaging with your customers. We talked about Zoom, B2B strategy versus B2C, uh, service-based strategy versus product-based strategy. Uh, we've talked about LinkedIn direct messages with video. You know, We've talked about analytics. So you can take the information you learned from this webinar and do it yourself, which is totally fine. Um, or uh, if you want to take advantage and apply. And again, I just want to iterate this is it's not guaranteed that we're not going to work with everybody. It's got it because we have, we're doing this practically for, it is for free for us. I mean, we're doing it for cost, but uh, uh, go to this URL that you see here at the bottom of this, uh, this live stream. So online growth systems.com slash bricks, the number two bytes. So bytes as in like the digital bytes, like a, like a, the matrix. So um, then I'll share my screen here and show you what the landing page looks like. So this is the application. So the Bricks to Bytes campaign, uh, this is kind of the follow-up from the webinar today of JD and myself. So partnering with Build Labs, 
and online growth systems we're providing for cost as a part of our initiative of giving, paying it forward, giving back to the community and uh, during this COVID-19 stuff. So uh, if you have, it, uh, this is where you're going to, this comment section is like, why, why should we work with you versus the other people that are applying for the Bricks to Bytes kind of scholarship, I guess is a great way to put, we should have just called it a scholarship, JD is kind of what it is. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's just pretty simple, your name, your business name, what pl program are you applying for? And then there's three options here, you know, build my Shopify, my Shopify e-commerce store. Uh, that's if you're going from oblivion to this is your first time going to e-commerce, uh, help my website get traffic and sales through marketing. So this is if you already have an existing website and you might, you might already be on Shopify or Magento or whatever, uh, or Woo WooCommerce or uh, WordPress. And then you can check on this item or if you're, you want both and then you click on this Shopify plus marketing. And of course there's the other option. We left that open-ended and then uh, phone number. This is uh, this is going to be a follow-up. So uh, we, frankly, we don't know how many people are going to be applying to this, uh, but we're anticipating a lot. So uh, we'll probably be looking through your answers here. This is where you can comment about what your business is and why uh, you think you should be chosen for this scholarship. And then we'll probably be giving you a phone call, frankly, um, and kind of having that kind of follow-up, interview type with you and say like you know why should uh, we help why should we get this scholarship program to you instead of the other businesses that are applying and then uh after that we will uh we'll work with some of you uh that uh kind of fits the bill of well, how we think we can have the most impact on your business uh and it's not that we're going to pick the most struggling businesses right. uh that's not the case it's going to be the best our, fit our intention would be to help as many people as possible Absolutely. Uh, you know, because, because our objective is keep the economy running, right? We're going to come out of this. And really the only question is when we come up, come out of this, are we all going to be, uh, you know, standing still? Are we going to be crawling or are we going to be running when we come out of this? And, and as many people as we can help during this time, uh, get online, then mm -hmm. we're, then the, the entire economy is running better and, you know, people can pay their bills and, and that's really what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and then I think uh, I'm just looking at the other tabs we have open. Make sure you got pictures if you're a restaurant. Um, check out Shopify uh, if you want to bootstrap it. Otherwise, uh, if you want to do it for cost or apply for the scholarship, go to this website, which is linked uh, on the which is linked on the this live stream below. So onlinegrowthsystems.com/slash bricks plural the number two to buy it. And then uh, we got some more comments here uh, from JD. Uh, not the JD that's on the live stream co-hosting. Uh, JD was watching on YouTube. Uh, what gets measured gets improved. Uh, and he said that's a great quote. So, yeah, the, uh, JD, that's a quote from Peter Drucker, uh, Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. It's a little book. Um, and the quote is, uh, what gets measured gets managed. It's one of my favorites. Uh, we, we, we say that uh, very frequently to our customers. And uh, measurement and uh, analytics and data is what fuels decisions. Right. So uh, here, let me just grab, let me grab another book. JD, you can kind of entertain people for a minute here. <laughs> All right. uh, let's see. Sell me dance. Um, that was kind of uh, uh, on the spot. Um, I have no idea what to, what to say. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I can talk about, you know, we talked about, you know, earlier, like along this lines, what gets measured and improved, you know, uh, uh, again, there's lots of different products, but one of the things I mentioned is like, if you want to do a b testing shopify does allow for, for that uh mm -hmm. you can measure what your customers uh are like and, and, and improve that by the a, a b testing so that's as much of a song and dance segue as i can do i like it i like it that actually inspired uh <laughs> so another great piece is let's say that you're watching this and you have an e-commerce site and you're looking for more of automating the marketing portion um of, of course you can apply to the bricks to bytes campaign marketing is it's not just the shopify thing we're also doing marketing um, but if you want to do it, do it yourself or you have a team internally, uh, HubSpot offers uh, kind of their own version of a scholarship. Otherwise, it gets super expensive, super fast. So if you want to like test the waters a little bit, go to HubSpot and uh, fill out their application for startups. And you might not consider yourself a startup, but HubSpot's a billion dollar corporation. You might be considered a startup to HubSpot, right? <laughs> so go there and they actually give up to 95% discounts for the first year of a, as being a HubSpot user, maybe it's 90%. I thought it was 95, but, um, but uh, that's something that you can use. So that way you can plug it into your existing website and create those automated split tests, create those abandoned cart recovery emails, like uh, what JD was saying um, and stuff like that. So I, I hear the two books I got. So here's the book, Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. 
that's where that uh, what gets measured gets managed comes in. It's just a quick little read. Um, and I actually have a, if you go to onlinegrowthsystems.com and go to the, let me just show it here. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Five seconds. So if you go to onlinegrowthsystems.com, go to Entrepreneurs Entertaining Education. So we've got obviously our services. But if you go down here to videos, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can actually find our, uh, I think it's a six minute book summary on this book. So if you want to get more gold nuggets from Peter Drucker, that's where you can go to that. But uh, if one of, the, one of the best books I've read in the last six months was uh, Principles by Ray Dalio. And he is the founder and chief investment officer of, uh, I think it's called Bridgewater and Associates, which is one of the largest uh, investment firms on the planet. They are a massive hedge fund investing firm, uh, retirement, you know, financial company. And uh, it's a thick book. This is a, this is like a, the, what he considers like his manifesto, uh, which is actually, I think, one of three parts. He's going to have one on, uh, what are the sections here? I think business and uh, investing. And then he's got one on life and he's got one on management. Um, so this is this covers two out of the four kind of manifestos that he's written. And one thing that he does is he creates data driven decision making. And he says as much as much data as you can collect, that should impact your decision. So kind of what uh, to interact or to iterate why measuring things are so important. If you don't know what's driving your sales, if you don't know why customers buy from you, how are you going to know what to change? and what to double down on and what to cut if you don't know the answers to your own questions, right? Or you, if you don't even know what questions to ask. So number one, you got to know where's your website traffic coming from? Are they qualified? You know, if, they're, if, you're, if you're a brick, brick and mortar company that sells to, uh, you can only ship to people in the United States and, and you're getting millions and millions of people who are coming to your website, but they live in uh, Australia, that's unqualified traffic. It's unqualified sales prospects. You know, that might be valuable in another sense. Uh, maybe you're getting a shit ton of blog readers and you're, you can sell digital products, but if you can't ship to them, your product, that's unqualified traffic. I don't care if you're getting a billion views. If you're getting a, if you're getting a seventh of the world to see your stuff, but you're having zero dollars in sales because you just can't ship to them for some weird reason. Um, that's, that's something you need to know. Cause you might, if you don't know, that's what's going on. You're like, I can't, I don't understand. We're getting a billion people visiting our website every month, but zero sales. Well, maybe that's because when they try to go to their checkout process, they can't check out because you don't have the shipping capability and you've disabled that, right? So A, enable that shipping and figure that shit out so you can get a billion dollars worth of sales or B, uh, you need to figure out what you're, what, you're, what you're doing wrong in your marketing and you need to see if you can get a billion people who are qualified, right? So uh, data-driven uh, decision-making is definitely something I want to iterate today. But um, JD, I think that kind of, uh, is there anything else you want to touch base on? No, I think that may, maybe the, you know, there should be another um, webinar in the future about, uh, about what you're talking about more on the, on the conversions. Once you, once you have traffic, uh, what do you do with mm -hmm. that traffic and how do you make sure that it's the right traffic? So but that's probably, yep. probably uh, for another webinar. Right. So we could talk about sales funnels all day long, right? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much to everybody who uh, attended. Uh, we had, four different uh three or four different platforms that we were live streaming to this webinar uh everybody on the online growth systems newsletter if you're on the growthers digest that uh that came to this webinar i appreciate you guys you guys are the vips um uh and of course if you don't know what that is there's a reason because they were vips <laughs> but uh so everybody from the vip list uh welcome back glad to see you guys in another webinar um everybody from build labs community thanks for attending and everybody else who's just general public who came in to, to chime in on the live stream we appreciate you and uh, to the uh, people who participated in the Q&A section and the comments, we appreciate you uh, because a lot of times people are asked, they, they're thinking the same questions. So when, when we're able to address one question, most of the time that actually answers many people. So we appreciate you as well. So we'll get through awesome. this. Come out stronger. Awesome. JD, thanks for, uh, for co-hosting. Appreciate yeah. you. And uh, we look forward to partnering with you with uh, the customers that we're going to help out and all these businesses that are hopefully uh, making that transition from bricks to bytes. Take care, everybody. See you, everyone.